Reading The Lost Keys of Freemasonry, The Legend of Hiram Abiff. And we, we read the introduction last night and I uploaded it. This next part is entitled The Emerald Tablet of Hermes. And then in parentheses, it says Tabula Smeragdina. And if you type that into Google, it says the Emerald Tablet, also known as the Smeragdina or Smeragdine Tablet or Tabula Smeragdina, is a compact and cryptic piece of the Hermetic reputed, or excuse me, uh, Hermetica reputed to contain the secret of the Prima Materia and its transmutation. It was highly regarded by European alchemists as the foundation of their art and its hermetic tradition. And it says the, Herm the Emerald Tablet, the most ancient monument of the Chaldeans concerning the Lapis Philosophorum. Lapis Philosophorum, hang on, let me, let me look that up really quick. See what that's, that, that means. I think it might have something to do with philosophy. Lapis Philosophorum. Well, according to Wikipedia, it says, The Philosopher's Stone, more properly, Philosopher's Stone or Stone of the Philosophers, Latin, Lapis Philosophorum, is a legendary alchemical substance. You know, I think that might be referring to the the substance in which the tablets is created because in the in the actual book the emerald tablets of those translated by Do dr doriel uh in the beginning there's a little a little like introductory part where he talks about how um how the physical material of the emerald tablets is fixed and no change ever taking place and by so it violates the the laws of uh some kind of law of uh, of physics or something like that, um, and, and it talks about how they use some weird alchemical uh, technology to, to basically create these tablets to where they're they're basically like indestructible is basically what it says, and it, it can it can never be changed. I think that's what they might be re uh, referring to when they say that. The Emerald Tablets of Hermes, illustrated on the opposite page, introduces us to. King Hiram, the hero of the Masonic legend, the name Hiram is taken from the Chalde or the Chalde Kyrim. The first two large words mean the secret work. The second line in the large letters, Kyrim, Talet, Mechasot, M E M E C H A S O T, or Mechasa. I think is how you pronounce that, means Chirim, the universal agent, one in essence, but three in aspect, translated the body of the tablet, reads as follows. And then in parentheses it says, It is true and no lie, certain and to depended, or excuse me, certain and to be depended upon, that the superior agrees with the inferior and the inferior with the superior to effect that one truly wonderful work as all things owe their existence to the will of the only one so all things owe their origin to only one thing the most hidden by the arrangement of the one only god the father of that only one thing is the sun its mother is the moon the wind carries it in its wings, but its nurse is a spiritual earth. That only one thing is the father of all things in the universe. Its power is perfect after it has been united to a spiritual earth. Separate that spiritual earth from the dense or crude earth by means of, of a gentle heart with much attention. In great measure, it ascends from earth up into heaven and descends again, newborn, on the earth. And the superior and the inferior are increased in power. 
By this thou wilt partake. Oh, sorry. By this thou wilt partake of the honors of the whole earth, and darkness shall fly from thee. This is the strength of all powers. With this thou wilt be able to overcome all things and transmute all that is fine and all that is coarse. In this manner the world was created, but the arrangements that follow this road are hidden. For reason I am called Kairim Telat Mekosat, one in essence, but three in aspect. In this trinity is hidden the wisdom of the whole world. It is ended now what I have said concerning the effect of the sun. I think when he says over here, uh, he's, when he's talking about one in essence but three in in aspect, I think that might be a reference to how they refer to as Hermes, the, the thrice great, or Hermes the thrice born. And then it says, Finis, finis, F-I-N-I-S, of the tabula smaragdina, which we just looked up, and that means the emerald tablets. In a rare, unpublished, old manuscript dealing with the early Masonic and Hermetic mysteries, we find the following information concerning the mysterious universal agent referred to as Kyrim or Hiram. So I guess when they were referring to Kyram, it's also referring to Hiram. Because in here, they, they, there's two different spellings of it. One is referring to him spelling C-H-I-R-A-M. And then in, in parentheses, now on this one, it says H-I-R-A-M. So this, they're, they're referring to the same person here. And I think this Hiram might, maybe this is another word used to describe Hermes. So remember, Hermes, uh, he was, you know, he, he had, according to the Emerald Tablets, he had, he had transcended death passing only as as he pleases into his next bodies he he lived thousands and thousands of years over and over again incarnated into different bodies he created his bodies and he didn't re incarnate well with his memory lost um, so he was known all over the world from all different cultures all different races and they all had different names for them and uh, his you know he he's been around for so long that like he just he got known by all these different names and deified as with all these different uh, different different names, but using the same symbolism, always using the same symbolism. All right, so the next part, it says, the sense of this emerald tablet can sufficiently convince us that the author was well acquainted with the secret operations of nature and with the secret work of the philosophers, alchemists, and hermetic philosophies. He likewise well knew and believed in the true God. It, it has been believed since several ages that the, the Cham, C-H-A-M, one of the sons of Noah, is the author of this monument of antiquity, a very ancient author whose name is not known, who lived several centuries before Christ, mentioned this tablet and says that he has seen it in Egypt at the courts, that it was a precious stone, an emerald, whereon these characters were, were represented in base relief, not engraved. He states that it was in his time esteemed over 2,000 years old, and that the matter of this emerald had once been in fluid state like melted glass and had been cast in a mold and that this or oh, excuse me and that to this flux the artist had given the hardness of the natural and genuine emerald by art alchemical art it says in parentheses the canaanites were called the phoenicians by the greeks who have told us they had hermes for one of their kings there is a great relation between Kerim and Hermes. Okay, so I guess Hiram or Kyrim isn't Hermes, but they have a, they're, they're in some kind of relation or partners, or maybe Hiram was one of his, um, one of his initiates. Kyrim is a word composed of, 
of three words denoting the universal spirit, the essence whereof the whole creation does consist, and the object of Chaldean, Egyptian, and genuine natural philosophy according to its inward principles and properties. The three Hebrew words are Kama, Rak, or Rosh, R-A-U-C-H, and Majin, or Mahim. I think it's Mahim, M-A-J-I-M. Mean respectively fire, air, and water, while their initial con- uh, consonants, C H R M, give us Chiram, that invisible essence which is the father of earth, fire, air, and water, because all, although immaterial in its own invisible nature. Oh, sorry. Let me let me let me do that one again. Okay, so. While their initial con- consonants, C-H-R-M, give us Chiram, that invisible essence, which is the father of earth, fire, air, and water, because although immaterial in its own invisible nature as the unmoved and electrical fire, when moved, it becomes light and visible, and when collected and agitated, becomes heat and visible and tangible fire, and when it associates with humidity, it becomes material. The word chiram has been metamorph, uh, metamorphosed or metamorphosed into Hermes and also into Hermon. And the translators of the Bible have made chiram by changing chet, C H E T, into he. Both of these Hebrew words, or both of these Hebrew word signs being very similar. In the old word hermaphrodite, a word invented by the philosophers, we find Hermes changed to Herm, signifying Chiram, or the universal agent, and Aphrodite, the passive principle of humidity, who is also called Venus, and is said to have been pronounced and generated by the sea. We also read that Hiram, and in parentheses, Chiram with the sea before it, or the universal agent assisted King Solomon to build the temple. No doubt that as Solomon possessed wisdom, he understood what to do with the corporealized universal agent. The Talmud of the Jews says that King Solomon built the temple by assist by assistance of Shamir. Now this word signifies the sun as a large machine which is perpetually collecting the om- omnipresent surrounding electrical fire of Spiritus M- Mundi and sends it constantly to the excuse me and sends it constantly to us in the planets in a visible manner called light. The electrical flame Corporealized. Let me let me look up that word really quick. Hang on. Corporealized. It says cor- corporealized or corporealizing. Third person singular simple present corporealizes present uh, participle corporealizing. Simple past and past, hang on, to make corporeal, to give, oh, to give physical form. Okay, that's what that means, that word corporealize. It means to give something physical form. All right, the electrical flame corporealized and regenerated into the stone of the philosophers enabled King Solomon to produce the immense quantities of gold and silver used to build and decode his temple. The electrical flame corporealized and regenerated into the stone of the philosophers enabled King Solomon to produce the immense quantities of gold and silver used to build and decorate his temple. I wonder if that, I think what that means is like he had some highly advanced technology and understanding of how to transmute some kind of energy or material into gold and silver. And that's al- 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 alchemy right there. He had some kind of highly advanced understanding or a technology, alchemical technology that literally just enabled him to, to create 
immense amounts of gold and silver. That's that's what that how, what I what that translates to me. These ancient paragraphs from an ancient philosopher may assist the Masonic student of today to realize the tremendous and undreamed of store of knowledge that lies be behind the allegory, which he often hears t hears but seldom analyzes. Hiram, the universal agent, might be translated Vita, the power eternally building and unfolding the bodies of man. The use and abuse of energy is the key to the Masonic legend. In fact, it is the key to all things in nature. And Hiram, as the triple energy, or excuse me, and Hir Hiram as the triple energy, one in source but three in aspect, can also be called either the unknown hypothetical element which carries the impulses of the gods through the macrocosmic nervous system of the infinite. Wow, that was a crazy profound statement. So, so okay, so maybe Hi Hiram is not necessarily a, a man or a, or a human. It's some kind of like, some kind of energetic construct built into the universe that can be harnessed and wielded. Let's read that again. And Hiram, as the triple energy, one in source but three in aspect, can almost be called ether. Because remember, ether is like the, the, that energetic field that connects all things in the universe. The unknown hypothetical element which carries the impulses of the gods through the macrocosmic nervous system of the infinite. That's heavy stuff. Hermes or Mercury, because remember, the Mercury was what the Romans called him. So Hermes or Mercury was the messenger of the gods, and ether carries impulses upon its wings. The solving of the mystery of ether, or if you prefer to call it such, vibrant space, is the great problem of masonry. You know, when they were talking about ether, and the, the fabric of the universe. This is this is what I think there is also being referred to as today as as zero point energy. And th this is what I believe is used in the secret space programs and the anti gravity and the free energy technology that Nikola Tesla was t was tapping into. I believe that right now this is exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about f uh, the free energy technology that Nikola Tesla was tapping into. They're t they're talking about the 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 zero point energy that's that's been reverse engineered and is used in the secret space programs. That's that's what I'm pretty sure they're talking about right here. This ether, as a hypothetical medium, brings energy to the three bodies of thought, emotion, and action. And in this way, Chirim, the one in essence, becomes three in aspect, mental, emotional, and vital. So this ether that they're tapping into, like this can, this is, I think this also might be you know, like like some kind of conscious energy that we're all connected to that is somehow rend part of the whole manifestation of this reality. And this energy can be tapped into and transmuted and used to materialize whatever we want. Back to that word, corporealize, to make something material. And Thoth talks about this also in his Emerald Tablets when he talks about he's, you know, when he talks about how... Uh, you know, many of the stars have I traveled, many men, many races of men have I seen on their worlds, some rising high as the, the stars, some falling deep, deep into the darkness. And he talks about some were so advanced that they could literally transmute energy and just create whatever they wanted from the ether. All right, let's continue. The work which follows in an effort to bring to light other forgotten and neglected elements of the Masonic rites and to emphasize the spirit of Hiram as the universal agent, so again, like they're talking about the ether, masonry is essentially mysterious, ritualistic, and ceremonial, but these things represent in concrete form only abstract truth and earth or substance, smothering energy or vitality is the mystery behind the murder of the builder. Behind the murder of the builder. I wonder what they mean by that. All right, the, I, get, I think that was the end of that part. So there, there's another title now in the next part, and it just says text. 
Okay, no, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and, and stop the video right here, and then I'll 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 begin the next section in in a next or in a separate upload. Really interesting stuff.